All right, back, and I will have the, the panel in here in just one second. Uh, I'm, I'm transformed into rewatch mode, but I did want to show you really quickly. Oh, let me bring the panel in first, and then I'll show you guys this, uh, and then we'll you know switch my avatar and everything like that. So uh, without further ado, welcome to the Tuesday Night Classics, the kickoff of the Halloween season, The Invisible Man, which we're going to be watching here tonight as we're going to move through a lot of the classic Universal Monster movies in September and October. It's going to be a lot of fun. With me, as always, is my trusty hi, TA, Al. Big Al. Say hi, Al. <laughs> welcome, welcome. We also have with us the Klingon cleric himself, hello, hello. Mr. Troy Pacelli. Welcome, Troy. And, of course, the uh, the lovely uh, Netter Network presiding over us all with her wisdom and grace. Hi, guys. Love How are you all doing welcome tonight? To Can you hear me okay? Yep. Awesome. I was having some mic issues, Great. so I'm That's glad you perfect. can hear me. <laughs> nice. Good, good. Let me uh, show this real quick, and then I'll look at your avatars. If people are oh, and uh, for queuing up the movie, I'm at one second. The classic Universal, where the planet and the plane mm -hmm. flying around, has just started to fade in. That's one second for me on my DVD. So I'm going to queue up while we're talking here. So we'll start in a second. But uh, here, I just want to show that this is my uh, version of this. Back when the movie Van Helsing came out, the same guy who directed the the Brandon Fraser Mummy. <laughs> film did Van Helsing, which featured Dracula, Frankenstein, Wolfman, and all that kind of stuff. The uh, Universal released a series of these, and their DVDs are not Blu-rays. I'm jealous of Fan Man. He says he's got the Blu-rays. But this is a really sweet edition, uh, and I got all the Universal Monster movies that they did this with. They did this with Dracula, Wolfman, Frankenstein, The Mummy, um, Invisible Man, Creature of the Black Lagoon. And uh, it includes every Invisible Man movie. So the Invisible Man 2, The Returns, The Woman, Invisible Woman, um, Invisible Agent. It even has that in there. And each film, you know, version does that. It's a sweet little case. It's, uh, you know, pretty cool how they've got it all set up and stuff. So really cool. Um, I know that there are Blu-rays now, but I don't know if anything is as sweet as this version, at least from what I've seen. So just want to show that off. Let me go ahead and head to the Avatar now because I do have, I do have with me the uh, Professor Wolf is back for the <laughs> Halloween season. <laughs> Ow. Ow. Werewolves abundant. Exactly. You know it's funny that you that you show those those DVDs. We I have that collection and actually had forgotten that I oh, had nice. them, but I had to I had to have a, a copy for Nanette anyway. So sure, sure. Uh, does it include the Abbott Costello Meet the Invisible Man? Um, let's see. Invisible Man Returns, Invisible Woman, and Invisible Invisible Man's Revenge. Uh, no, I think that's on a separate. That might be on a separate one. Yeah. Well, I know. Uh, that, I, know they, I think they released all the uh, Abbott Costellos on, on. I don't know if they did it in a yeah maybe version it's a like one. that, but I do yeah. know that they are all collectible together. I did. I did take them all and put them into one of my custom, you know, cases with the uh, Abbott and Costello and everything. So I have you know nice. a collection. Myself. That's right. Yeah. Troy's really good at creating those things that don't exist that should. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I want it. I'm going to have it, but yeah. I don't demand that anyone give it to me. I make it myself. I love these avatars you guys did. I'm just going to show these off real quick. This is Al's, which I think mm -hmm. is awesome. <laughs> Hiding under the blanket. <laughs> That's from the spine of that uh, DVD collection, that picture there. Yeah. yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah. Absolutely. Very cool. I, want, I, I, I wanted one where I, could, where I could get the most monsters for the buck. The, <laughs> the, oh, the only thing I, well, I had to cover, I had to cover oh. the Phantom with the Wolfman uh -oh. and, right, right. and it has um, Cheney's mummy as opposed mm -hmm. to yeah. Carlos. Right, 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 right. Cool. And I see Troy's uh, graced us with some invisible man. Oops, I actually muted him. Let me do that. There we go. I like that, Troy. Is that actually that, your face that you made invisible? Or no, no that's, a, that's no, no. an action figure. That is the Mego action figure. Mego is doing this whole line. Back in the 70s, they did the uh the classic monsters. They called them, I think it was the, the super monster line or something like that. And now they're coming out with all new ones. This is the invisible man, and in the in the as is the the style of Mego, they take other figures and do head swaps and stuff like that. So that original figure is actually al bundy oh nice. and they and they made him invisible <laughs> and put him in a suit <laughs> funny that's funny <laughs> cool that's awesome and then uh nanette did not go monster theme but neither should she because now we get to see her beautiful smiling face well, there in uh in bitmoji form <laughs> so someone did make a suggestion so i'm i'm working on getting that suggestion up so um 
And the meantime, so that may change while during I, the viewing. You know, try to get that suggestion going to. Yes. Sounds good. Exactly. No yes. No problem. I will share it when I see it. But uh, all right. Well, you, are you guys need a, need a time to queue up? Or are you good to go? I'm film here. I'm good to go. I'm good. Oh, good. Agent Boomer is joining us. Great to see you, Agent Boomer. I didn't think you were in the pre-show. Good uh, to see you there. Uh, you were talking about where people could watch it. The the Internet Archive has it as well. Oh, oh that's right. That. Because it is so old, it's probably public. Is it public domain? No, or I guess certain versions. Not, I mean, it's no, not but they, actually public domain. But they okay. do. I'll, I'm just saying they have a version. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, uh, we'll do the countdown as usual then, so we can go ahead and get it underway. I'll say three, two, one, play. And on the word play, that's when we actually hit the play button. So let me wake up my controller here. All right, here we go. Okay, I changed three. my avatar. Wow. Oh, yes, you did. That is, uh, <laughs> nice. yep. that is Mrs. Uh, Cassandra Peterson herself. <laughs> you have that <laughs> costume, don't you? Hmm. <laughs> Tell us more, Troy. <laughs> <laughs> and if oh, she does, why are we looking at a picture of the, of the real one? Why are because we only I get to see her in that costume. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So three, two, one, play. And on the word play, that's when we'll hit the button. Uh, here we go. Three, two, one, play. And, you know, as we were getting ready for this um for this rewatch you know obviously when whenever you you go online and you go to look something up what's coming up is mostly the remake and i'm looking at that going you know i really wish that one of the rules of of intellectual property was if you're going to make a remake of something the original then falls into public domain that would really prevent oh, people uh -huh. from putting out crummy remakes oh yeah I, yeah I know that's a ridiculous pie-in-the-sky thought, but it's what I was thinking. The new, the new one is in no way, shape, or form a remake. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. it's name only. Yeah, it's really awful. Does I it mean, use the, any of the, the character thing, names? Uh, I don't know. but oh, okay. I mean, it's basically a guy going after his wife or something, and that's yeah. not what this yeah, yeah. is about. The great, the great James Whale. The great James <laughs> Whale is more commonly known for the Frankenstein films, which are yeah. wonderful. But he did this great film. He did Showboat too, if you remember. Um, uh -huh. He did a lot of great classic movies. Uh, Gloria Stewart, uh, of course, mm -hmm. people yes. will remember from Titanic as the older Rose. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, okay. A lot of great names there. Uh, of course, really Henry Travers, who was. Uh, there was a um, Clarence in Clarence it's in Life. It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah, well, we, we got to do a rewatch. Oh. There was of that a Donald, year, guys. There was a, a Donald dog? Stewart listed. Are they related? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, it's a Wonderful Life. That's definitely coming. That's uh, Good. if no one else picks it up, I'll make it. Make sure it happens in the Tuesday Night Classics for Christmas. Yeah. Um, the original star that was attached yeah. to this was Boris Karloff. Yeah, as and the Invisible Man. As the Invisible Man, Karloff oh. and Whale had a falling out uh, over this movie because he didn't think Karloff had the sense of the air of education that the, wow. of a scientist huh. uh, at the time, and he and he didn't like his voice, and he knew well, he wanted Reigns when he heard the voice on the audition tape. Huh. That's the thing I said that. The Invisible Man's one of the few Universal monsters who doesn't really uh, fill us with pathos for him because he's pretty straight up evil, and it, that works for the yeah. story. We'll explain it, but you've got the idea that uh, you you need that evil in that voice, and Reigns can do that. I think yeah. Karloff would have been so yeah. just too pathos ridden, you know. Yeah, yeah, I, can, I guess I can see that. Um, but you make an excellent point about. Um, I, we we tend to think of these movies as monster movies, mm -hmm. what are but they don't pl not all of them play as monsters. There's always a little bit of, you know, sympathy for the devil kind of worked yeah. into exactly these characters, and I don't I don't like that. You well, know? and he he was I mean he was driven in this one he was driven mad by the procedure. Mm -hmm. In the book, he was already kind of yeah evil. 
And I would even argue in, in this, was he really driven mad by the procedure or is that just an excuse? Well, see, that's the thing. And that's the great thing that this story brings to forefront is like, what would you do if there were no consequences? That's the true measure of your character. So remove those. And then you show your true colors show. They do mention a dog that went crazy when he was experimenting on. Yeah, but I, I think even so, it. it's it's that it's that question of the movie poses, though you know. Um, yeah. But... Uh, the great Una O'Connor, of course. I love and that I, shrill. But yeah. but that uh, that brings up another her. good point, Al. I mean, if if you can make the argument that just because it happens to a dog, shouldn't a, a human have more agency? To take mm-hmm. control of the situation, well, or yeah, is man gonna... just an animal? You know, may I believe man is just an animal, just with a higher thought process, but mm. still an animal. That's spoken like a spoken like a good Catholic man there, like a true nihilist. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Wow, well, Al. <laughs> well, ultimately, I mean, ultimately, we're flesh and bone. And... Really, what's happened to your Sunny? Dis- we we miss Sunny Al. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Bill and Ted and went crazy. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> no, I listened to your review and I was like, yeah. Well, no, I, no, no, I mean, we're, I mean, we're technically mammals. I mean, you know, if we want to get, and this is a but film about a scientist. Image. This is a film about a scientist. I'm not going to get to the religious aspect of it. <laughs> Actually, no, that brings up an excellent point. That's another aspect that the character could use to, to hinge on, you know, I'm a scientist, you know, so I, you know, I'm above, you know, this mm-hmm. and, and that, you know scorning god and all of that kind of thing and i like that you guys are drawing that comparison to him as a scientist too because of course you know even though religion isn't at the forefront in this movie the good monster movie without questions of ethics and, and morality and there is the you know what sets apart man from animal is it's the soul man is made in god's image animal is not yes. and uh that aspect that you you have that uh there should be that greater sense of of um, of morality or something like that. And when you don't see it, and, and mankind can sometimes hide behind that. Oh, it's just oh, it's all it's all material. But, it's all you know. Yeah. And unlike unlike a dog, the human the human scientist Griffin had the had the free will to take mm. the serum. Excellent, excellent point. Mm-hmm. Um, AJ Boomer's got a, a super chat there. Oh, thank you, sir. Two dollars uh, from Agent Boomer. You rock, Agent Boomer. Does this movie have angry villagers with torches? Wait, till actually, you you'd be surprised. <laughs> I'll say that. <laughs> actually, that's probably why he asked the question. Although I, I do want to acknowledge um, Spidey Rules' comment beforehand. He says Al is turning into Fan Man. <laughs> he hates everything. <laughs> I do not hate it. I'm just I saying. Love, I've been love, love, love this movie. He, he, it's just a cautionary I, tale, Al. Don't lose your sunny disposition. <laughs> I have heard Should a lot I of that's what she said comments coming from Al. Uh, 644. 644? Okay. That's like what I'll say. 4950, 51, 52. <laughs> okay. Uno, I like Uno, Connor, oh, yeah. such, such a favorite of James Whale. He put her in Bride of Frankenstein. Yep, he loved her. Loved her shrieking in her, in her oh, cries and stuff like that. She's a great character actor. She really is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The moment right there. <laughs> so. <laughs> and I will so say, like- I had the great privilege of playing the Invisible Man in a school play for one performance at a dress nice. rehearsal. Nice. <laughs> But that's a so, great reveal of the monster. Like it was just a split scene of the mouth, what shouldn't have been there. But that's that's really like, whoa, what you know? There's and, something and it's not else the whole I thing want to yet. point out that I just noticed here. Look at the nose. Okay. Well, obviously mm-hmm. the mouth, but the nose. It's a fake nose. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. And when you consider when the, the book was written, wasn't it like 1890 something? Yeah. Yeah, she wells, yeah. It yeah. was it was significantly before World War One, but World War One was right on on the horizon there. Mm-hmm. And I just imagine I, I picture the images that I've seen of all the soldiers that were disfigured during World War One and had these prosthetic facial appliances, mm-hmm. very much like that nose. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know if that was intentional, but I can't help but draw that correlation. 
Well, there's syphilis too that that ate away people's nose, right? Was yes, it, it good point. Yeah. Good point. So, so that was a thing too at the time. I was reading an article about this uh, a French woman uh, who was a sculptor who who made the the facial prosthetics for World War One soldiers. Uh, incredible story. Sorry, I'm sorry. Tom, I I can't see him without seeing Clarence now. Uh, mm -hmm. Tom Spiegel very very uh, justifiably takes me to task for not checking into the chat. Somebody needs a timestamp. Uh, you want to give him one, L? Uh, 8.59, 9 minutes, 9.01, 9.02. Yep. Okay. And uh, thank you, Tom Spiegel. I will I will do, do my duty and check in with the chat a bit more. Look look for the beautiful blonde. You know, you can see Stewart the resemblance. Was, was very attractive. She did another... I did... She did the dark old house. That's a great one with Boris Karloff yeah. too. Yeah, I almost put that on our schedule instead of Jekyll and Hyde, but I thought even though Frederick Marx isn't a Universal movie, it's more iconic because that mm -hmm. is a great Universal also movie too, though. Right. So I want to point out, you know, we were talking about the book and whatnot. Obviously, H.G. Wells, and anything H.G. Wells is big in the steampunk community. So you can't you can't be a part of the steampunk community and not totally honor hg wells uh mm -hmm. the invisible man definitely plays a, a big role at True. steampunk conventions that's a good point you know one thing i just realized too that i'd like to ask the chat real quick is i didn't back out of the stream yard and come back in like i usually do so does it sound like i've got a delay am i talking is everybody talking over me or something like that am i delayed or does it sound like we're good maybe it just kind of fixed itself this stream and that's good but just checking you sound you guys, good to like, me yeah, well, cool. I'm not on YouTube, so I don't know if it's a YouTube thing or not. <laughs> yeah, we need we need the people in the stream to to let us know. I mean, when you when you were on camera, your your um, sync was out, but it doesn't really matter now that you're an icon. Oh, okay. So everybody says it's fine. Sounds good. All right, and thank professor, you and yeah. professor, you are an icon. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, sir. <laughs> All in a day's work. <laughs> 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 now this is where the pathos i think enters in you do have the woman who loved him and mm -hmm. this is this is a tragedy anytime where you know it's a typical story where the man chooses his work over love yeah. or um you know she'll commonly love something she saw in him at one time which he's decided to let die or something like that so it is a tragic archetypal story and that's where the pathos i think enters um when we were before the in, in the pre-show, um, uh, Spidey Rules was talking about um, the, the the Batman animated series and how censorship can sometimes elevate a story because you have to operate within con constraints. Um, and I uh, pointed out how sometimes having a, a limited budget can do the same thing. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. with Jaws, for example. And um, what I'm you know, I, I I will take the opposite <laughs> side of that as well and point out that, you know, we talk about remakes and we tend to deride them. But one of the things that you, you can't get in an H.G. Wells novel and even in an, uh, uh, a, a 19, what was this, 1930 something? 33. 1933. Yeah. Um, that you really want to explore with an invisible man is what what would a man do if he was invisible yeah you know um mm -hmm. it took some, it, you didn't see it until hollow man where we start really addressing the things that we all think about you know what i'm saying oh hollow man yeah yeah now see i think that the, this uh, woman got what she deserved because she's trying to force her way into the room and he's like go away yeah now I'm she's glad. complaining about it but it's like you got what you deserve you don't just go barge in somebody's place you know well, we I'm do really get a, you go, go ahead. I guess so we get a great Mrs. Dilber moment. Yeah. If you know what I mean? When she's running I'm, down the stairs screaming like that. Yeah. yeah. From, from Scrooge. But I'm glad you brought that up, Nanette, because uh, what has he done there so far? He hasn't really done anything except not conform to social norms. He doesn't look like the way he's supposed to look, and he doesn't act nice and polite and welcoming like the way so. But he's a paying customer. He's done nothing wrong. But that, uh, you know, that social outcast, you know, if you don't conform to social norms, you are a monster. So you get a little bit of that aspect. And what's he doing right here? He's trying to be visible again. 
He's mm-hmm. trying to come back from it at this point. So there's character growth in his character, even though he's not as pathos ridden. At first, he truly does want to return. And on the same token, I, I'll, I'll bring up the point that I brought brought up before. When when you draw the comparison to to uh, a disfigured man trying to put on facial prosthetics to, you know, blend into society or or, mm-hmm. or conform, that's kind of what he's doing. He's yeah. he, he feels like he has some sort of a disability. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you know, I I think it's worthy of being of bringing up. But I think people take it and make far too much over it. Okay, so James Whale was a homosexual man, and uh, you know people can point out, which is true, that you know these monster movies do connect with people who feel like there's an aspect of themselves they have to hide Mm -hmm. from general Mm -hmm. culture or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think people, especially queer theorists, take that far too far and just pretend that the whole movie's about nothing but his morality. That's ridiculous. Uh, right. There's many other things I'm sure in James Whale and anybody else who worked on the movie, just as there are things in us who watch the movie, every that's a common human experience, feeling like you have to hide certain aspects about yourself from from the greater, you know, sometimes rightfully so, and other times it's just sort of an like insecurity on your part. But. Well, at the risk of being, you know, too spiritual, I mean, you know, there's nothing that's gripped you but what's common to man. I mm-hmm. mean, I don't care if you're if your struggle is homosexuality or just any any other you know struggle that you have it's relatable you know um so it's whether it yeah it's a go ahead go ahead no, I'm, I'm not sure where i'm going with, with it the same thing with comics like with the x-men when you got this or that disenfranchised group trying exactly. to completely lay claim to the x-men but no one group Lay's claim to it's not just about race. It's not just about sexual age. It's about anybody of that coming of age moment who feels ostracized. And hey, that's every human in general. So that's why everybody loves the X Men and can relate. You know, you can't. And that's that's very important because uh, I've heard another interpretation that it has to do with adolescence, um, mm-hmm. yeah. especially since that was the target audience. You know, mm-hmm. uh, and so many adolescents came to it saying, "Oh yeah, I totally get." you know, the X-Men, because that's how I feel. Mm -hmm. I think one reason why James Whale might really favor her and her screams and stuff is because it's so over the top, Mm -hmm. but it kind of draws attention to how the, uh, the scandalized public can seem over the top too. You know? And remember the, and remember that how entertainment was at the time, the like stage burlesque. You you were always like the stage performers did go over the top. Yes, to reach true. the entire audience. Yeah, but there's one thing I want to that? point out. You really saw it earlier with Claude Rains when he was talking to the innkeeper. He was holding his hands together, like like really clenching them, like mm-hmm. he was trying to keep himself from bursting. But he, but the guy wouldn't leave. I wanted yeah. to point that out, but we got well past it when you guys went to the X Men. Isn't that there? Yeah, it's like at this point, he hasn't done anything wrong. He is, as you said earlier, a paying customer. Yet the mm-hmm. um, husband had come in there and started berating him for, you know, make sure, you know, you pay and da da da. And he's just like, look, I got work I need to do and threw him out. So now they get mm-hmm. the cops involved. It's like, but he didn't do anything wrong. It's like, I just want to be left alone. Why are you bothering me? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And this moment here, this is so, so iconic because. You, you, you just, you're crazy. You can't leave me alone. You're crazy to keep on curious, curious, crit. fine. Here's the truth of me. It's the horrifying truth of me. Now you're going to have to deal with it, you know, and, uh, and his, and it, he's going to deal with it, you know, in terms of wrath, getting revenge on them and all that stuff like that. But uh, either Troy or Al, I imagine one of you would probably be good to talk to how they did that special effect. Cause that's a pretty cool thing they did at that time showing the invisible. Uh, I believe they had him dressed in black velvet. But it was an early form of rotoscoping. Yes. Yeah, it was. It was that. It was like a, a very primitive. I, I want to say a green screen effect, but it wasn't a green screen effect. But it was using similar idea ideas. Yeah, it was. It was black screen, but it was mm-hmm. still a, yeah. a kind of an early rotoscoping. Yeah, and basically, basically, he was just f- dressed fully in this black outfit with the clothes over him. <laughs> and, and I would argue that, that this, this, this kind of justifies him. You know, it's like, again, as you said, what has he really done wrong? Why is he being persecuted? He deserves to 
you know, play the troll here a little bit. Mm -hmm. And there's something I think purposefully kind of scandalous about him as he's taking his pants off. He says, I'll give them a show they'll never forget or whatever. And then he's running around in nothing but a shirt. Horrifying, but it's also kind of like, uh, I'll show you, you know, uh, what it is to break social norms, you know, that kind of idea. Uh, David Deister, thank you very much for $10. Said, I saw the documentary on Howard Asham and another man who used his uh, queerness to communicate. Do you think he would like this work being remade? Oh, James Whale? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I don't know enough about him as a man. I just know his work. I did enjoy, which of course is, is a movie, so it took artistic license, but uh, Of God and Monsters, where Ian McKellen plays James Whale. Brendan mm. Fraser plays in it as well as a uh, as a man who meets him a little bit later in life, and that's a wonderful movie. But I, I don't know how much that's really true to his person, and how much was artistically kind of you know licensed there. So I really don't know. It's a good question. I'd like to know the answer to that myself, David. One thing I want to point out right here: all the actors who have to react to nothing long before we were doing mm -hmm. CGI. You know, yeah. I you have to admire an actor that can can pantomime really. Mm -hmm. Long before the cast of uh, the original Star Trek showed us how it was done on the ship. <laughs> they were yeah. hit by laser photons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good point. <laughs> you can see the string that the bicycle's on there, but I love that effect still. What you have In to all imagine these universal this poor guy... Sorry, you have to imagine this poor guy's really cold right now. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it is a trope of these Universal Monster movies to have the little villages. Those villages that don't really exist, especially in some of the countries where they're supposed to take place, but those little quaint Transylvania villages. And I love that sort of otherworldliness about these movies. So you've got sort of a British, uh, you know, Bobby there, but you've got this village that's a very sort of Transylvanian countryside. And there's always that divide between the man of science who's taken science too far and then the peasantry that he looks down on. So you saw this with Dr. Frankenstein as well, as well as you do here with, uh, and it's a common theme. And I think a lot of Wales' films, you even I'm see glad, a form, a form of it in showboat. Sorry, go ahead. I'm glad you brought that up because the, the reaction of the, the superstitious individuals to the mm -hmm. science, is it really unfair because the, 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 the evil, you know, the, the overstepping your bounds of science is totally justified. Um, it totally justifies the reaction of the, of the superstitious. They're right. Mm -hmm. You've, you really have trampled on the, the order of nature or the will of God or, or whatever, Yeah, you know, yeah. even if you don't believe it literally, even, even, um, in, in analogy and, and aged boomer has a, uh, super chat oh thank you sir five dollar super chat thank you agent boomer i much appreciate it did they use the same village set for all the universal movies i imagine they probably had to reuse it a couple times but i don't know do you know al did you uncover that in your trivia mm, i know that certain set pieces were used several times mm -hmm. but not for sure on that one yeah. this was the studio they, they era always, yeah they were always building some yeah. of the back lots. I mean, building, they, tearing down, reusing things for different films. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. gone, gone, gone with the wind. They when they burn stuff, they were burning old sets. Oh yeah. wow! Yeah. yeah, including the King Kong, uh, the big uh, wall. Mm -hmm. One uh, one little thing that happened earlier when uh, when the Invisible Man stole the bicycle. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, as a as a fan of Rio Lobo, uh, Professor, the man he sold the bicycle from was Walter Brennan. Oh, really? Yep. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, there's there are several famous people in this that you kind of got to look out for. Mm -hmm. Even I'm not sure exactly where they are, but like John Carradine's in this, and Dwight Fry, uh, Red Redfield, and Fritz. From they the, are. The I ones. didn't know that. Where are like in the in the crowd? Uh, yeah, John Carradine is a Cockney informer, and Dwight Fry is a reporter uh, somewhere. 
Um, David Dyster, you're asking about Howard Ashman. Who, who are you? Howard Ashman. He was friends with. Do you mean the, the, the Disney? The guy who worked with Mencken and stuff like that? Uh, I don't know much about him. I did he was he does he have a connection to Wales? I, I didn't uh I don't really know much about that. <laughs> Tom Spiegel says Big Al, you might already know it, but Clint Eastwood is in one of the creature sequels. Yes, yes. Oh yeah. I cool. uh he's also in Tarantula. Oh okay, I want, yeah. As a I fighter want to... pilot. I want to address Paladin Demos' comment. He says, but how far can a scientist go without consequences, excuse me, consequences of retribution? I would say, ask Oppenheimer. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Mm -hmm. I would say we have historic precedent for scientists understanding that they need to take responsibility for their work. Yeah. This is freaky. So the, the radio turns off and then you hear his voice. I mean, I just can't imagine. I think if anybody could replace Reigns, it was Vincent Price in the second film, you know, but uh, Reigns' voice is just just perfect for this character and this, you know. Yeah, it has this degree of menace. Mm -hmm. I, I would use this as an opportunity to hold up all the voice actors that uh, I don't think get enough credit. Good point. You know, uh, a good actor needs to be a good voice actor. Mm -hmm. What You're talking about voice actors. Mark Hamill yep. used an aspect of Clark Ray's performance in his Joker. That doesn't surprise me oh, the really? slightest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Might want to disinfect and if you think about all the least. actors that that came out of the era of radio, and then made oh, yeah. the transition to television later, yeah, you know, and that and this was Claude Rains' first talkie film. Really, he, he I didn't had, know that he had been in a, uh, a silent film before this, and he was primarily a stage actor. Hmm. But this is his first on-screen major role. Okay. I don't know if, I mean, Al, I know you do. Professor, I don't know if you have any experience with acting, but can you just imagine as an actor, you know, going through the different eras, which came pretty rapid fire from silent yeah. film where you're doing pantomime True. to radio where you're doing just voice to talkies where you're doing both, mm -hmm. you know? And even burlesque is, uh, I was saying, or vaudeville rather, not burlesque. Yes, vaudeville. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Many of these yeah, actors to be did all of those. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's very true. And that's why it's tragic that so many wonderful, wonderfully talented, like silent film actors and actresses mm -hmm. couldn't make the switch because they didn't have the voices or didn't have the presence in that manner. You know, that that like, aspect uh, is brought up in Singing in the Rain. You know, it's, yeah. it's kind of caricaturized but there were sadly a lot of actors that felt more rudolph, tragically in sunset boulevard but yeah yeah rudolph valentino i think was was like one of those actors that just wasn't able to make the switch if, yeah, I, if I remember correctly oh and lister for 9.99 thank you so much sir i always thought the character of the invisible man would have been a great batman villain there was an episode in the animated series that was about a criminal who used an invisible suit. You're right. That's the guy who was uh, trying to visit his daughter, too. He'd lost custody of and stuff like that. What a great episode. I'm really glad you brought that up. That is, uh, that's a wonderful treatment of, of, again, this idea of what do you do when the consequences are removed, you know? And I got to uh, say that uh, for a, all a the talk hero. that we... Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, for all the talk that we do about villains ought to be villains and monsters ought to be monsters, one thing I do like about many of the, especially in the animated series, the Batman villains, mm -hmm. you give them depth by giving them, you know, a, a story that you can almost sympathize with, where they're yeah. not just clear. Cut. I mean, that's not a bad thing always. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's good to have mm -hmm. the, the elemental villain, the Joker, for example. But sometimes yeah. you, it's not a bad idea to have the Mr. Freeze, you know, mm -hmm. where you have exactly. some sympathy for him. You need the whole spectrum. Absolutely. Yeah. I think one of my favorite, well, I said in the Batman rewatch, so I'll save that for later. But, but 
But uh, I always love those old Bobby helmets. <laughs> <laughs> I knew we'd get to hats eventually. I, I just, <laughs> I just, I love a hat. <laughs> so, Spidey, Spidey Rules 1962 brings up that uh, Lon Chaney Sr. died just before the sound era. Mm -hmm. um, oh my gosh. Oh, yeah. Lon Chaney Sr. brought so much to not just acting, but to the the art of makeup. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. I, I, and, I, the I, and physicality. He was a physical yes. specimen. A lot of the stuff where he's hanging as a, a hunchback was him hanging there. He did all that uh, himself. I got to say that some of the techniques that I use when I do my Klingon thing are, are things that were created by Lon Chaney, mm -hmm. you know, techniques. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The fact that you were talking about, uh, he died shortly before a lot of these films. He was the original choice to play Dracula. Yep. That's yes, he he's, was. The, he's the one they wanted to, wanted to play Dracula, but he, he passed away <laughs> before that. Um, Troy, say, say more about the makeup there if you had any more to say about that, Troy, because I really like that. I want to kind of piggyback off that too, but that's a really important aspect to bring up when it comes to these so, western movies. Lon Chaney uh, created a lot of the, the, the prosthetic. The, I mean, the idea of prosthetics existed before Lon Chaney, but he developed his own methods uh, for using latex, spirit gum, and so forth, mm -hmm. um, which are staples of cosplay today. Yeah, we have a lot of, you know, we have foam rubber, we have late, uh, not late, uh, what's it called, silicone today, but the that 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 foundation, um, that that many of us cosplayers use today, uh, are are literally the techniques that were founded by Lon Chaney in the in the silent era. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm glad any, that any, anyone, Chaney. any Klingon who makes his own forehead is literally doing exactly what Lon Chaney mm -hmm. spearheaded. Yeah, he was, he, I mean, and it was not comfortable back then. He did some very uh, extreme techniques to get his, like uh, for the Phantom to make his nose stand up like that. Yep. And he had to so, like really like use all kinds of stuff to like deform his face. The um, couple things I want to say here. I'm, I'm glad that we're giving Lon Chaney his due because it's absolutely true. Now, when we get to this era of Universal monster movies, it becomes Jack Pierce who really picks up that torch and carries yes. it. You know, the, the classic yeah. makeup guy for Frankenstein, Wolfman, and stuff. And we'll talk about those more when we get to those films. But that's uh, it's an important thread. I don't I want to weave think that he these. didn't take some of those techniques from Lon Chaney. Sure, sure, mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, back back in the back in the 20s and even into the early 30s, actors had to be as uh as good at makeup as some of the great makeup artists are today because they had no they had no choice but to do it and that's why yeah. lon cheney just became so so proficient at doing it uh henry hall who played werewolf in london was also known for being a great makeup artist although he didn't do his makeup for that film that was jack pierce as well so i do want to move back to the the subject matter mm -hmm. here at hand because i like this idea terrifying moment where he's bullying his partner this guy you are my partner you will do it we're gonna start with a reign of terror we're gonna kill and he says no and he said do you want me to take these off or you can't see if i have you know so you got that bullying aspect and I think that H.G. Wells one of his brilliant uh moves as a writer and then they certainly interpreted this well for the film he took there's a basic monster archetype in uh, the wonderful Jekyll and Hyde. We did the mm -hmm. the book study of it last October on my channel, and we'll get to the movie version of it, you know, this rewatch uh, period. But there's a lot in that story, and part of it is that idea of the man obsessed with science, obsessed with the discovery. As the Invisible Man tells him here, he said, uh, "I my brain became a light, like I just I, I you know you could see him growing more and more obsessed with it, and then when the chemicals hit, it just confirms what's already within him, you know, in that sense." But, um, but the idea of drawing others into your madness and needing a henchman. I mean, this is Dracula and Renfield here, but it's in this context. I like that, yeah. that trope that you'll see in these kind of universal films. Yeah. The one, the one sad thing for the invisible man though, is that this is taking place in January and February yeah. Yeah. and it's cold. I mean, right. you saw the, yep. I mean, you, you saw how 
all the uh, snow earlier. Well, at least uh, no one can see the consequences. That's uh, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's encouraging. Yeah. Glad Nanette got that. No one else did. <laughs> Old married woman here. I understand it. <laughs> Dude, that was that was uh, Walter Brennan right there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now, what I like in these old movies is I love the houses and like the furniture and the way they've set up like their parlors or anything. Yeah. It's like there's just something mm -hmm. about it that I've always loved because people don't have houses like that anymore. You right. know, with that, yeah. um, with the, the parlors grand. and and all that. And the grand fireplace. Exactly. It looked so elegant back then. Mm -hmm. Of course, today the TV has taken the place of the fireplace. Yeah. Everyone sits around the TV. Part of what makes these movies have such a charm is that they're 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 made in the 30s, which is already far from us. So you have that sort of uncanniness, but then they're from stories that were written in late 1800s. And sometimes they're even set in that time or some sort of amalgamation. So the styles are this kind of weird combination of the two and stuff like that. It's almost like Gotham City we were talking about. You got the combination of styles. So between yeah. architecture, our costume de design and such. And, you know, you, you were talking about so far ago. Uh, we're only three years removed from the 100th anniversary of the first technical Universal horror film, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Three more, three more years, 2019, 23. Notice okay, this now, end is. Oh, oh, yeah, go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. Yours no, no. You, you were going to say something prevalent about the scene, I think. And I, I don't have anything no, no, pressing. No, I wasn't. Go okay. Ahead. <laughs> uh, the, the end is called The Lion's Head. And in the end, we do see, I think there's a boar's head, you know, up above the, the, uh, the doorway at one point. The idea is these trophies uh, show the, you know, what, why do you hunt? Why do you get trophies to show the superiority of man, you know, and above these other beasts or whatever? You've got this aspect there. So then there's the lion's head is this uh, the element or the frightening portion of the of the being. And of course, it was the invisible man's head that was so trophy like and so uncanny for people when he walked in. It was drawing their attention. So it just all ties up. Whale is really good at at a time when, especially in a studio era, when you could have just really phoned it in a little bit and still made these films successful. <laughs> Whale actually puts the themes in it and Whale actually puts the artistic elements in it, which I like. Um, yeah, my point was not temporally locked, so I, I, I didn't mind. Sure. Um, yeah. I just wanted to, to point out that we, we, we talk about sympathetic monsters. If there is one monster that is meant to be sympathetic, it's the hunchback. Oh, yeah. Right? That's part and parcel of the story. I am kind of disappointed that that never got a 30s or a, a Universal Monster era remake of, of this era, you know? I mean, it happened, Lon Chaney's great one, but we never got sort of a, a Jack Pierce era remake of that. Yeah, they did have the uh, Charles Lawton hunchback version. When was that? What year was that? Uh, 40s. I think it was in the 40s, I believe. I can't, okay. don't know the exact date of it. I think it's also starred. Um, oh, what's her name? Can't think of her name. Mar uh, Maureen uh, O'Hare. Yeah, Maureen O'Hare played uh, Esmeralda. Okay. I think it's all the more tragic because what we do get is, and and I have nothing against it. The Disney version. You know, I feel like mm -hmm. we need yeah. we need uh, you know. Some of these things deserve multiple versions, and it's okay mm -hmm. to have a Disney version if you have another live action, you know, faithful version. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Does yeah, that I, make I, sense? no, yeah, I, I dearly love the Disney version, but you're right, we do need uh, the other portrayal too, just to have it in the consciousness, absolutely. Because Disney is great for fabulizing these stories, you know, giving it the happy ending, the Disney story touch or so forth but it's good to have the adult faithful version because let's face it the the hunchback doesn't have a happy ending it's not meant to now here we get a little bit of the monster's achilles heel he must be uh invisible for an hour or so after eating because until the food's digested it's visible inside of him makes sense uh the charles lawton what was the version that the hunchback was 39 uh, okay uh, the Chevy Chase 
Invisible Man movie with Daryl O'Hanna, I think, and him. What was that called? Oh God, I love that one. Oh, it's a good one. Here. But there's that great scene where he eats something and he looks in the mirror and he sees the the food in his stomach and he vomits it back up and you just see it coming up out of his stomach because so Memoirs gross. of an Invisible Man. A Memoirs man, of yeah. Invisible Man. Yeah, right. that was good. That and see that's what I that's what I was talking about. Those kinds of different takes on it. I don't mind because they're not really remakes that yeah, yeah. Um, hollow man and so forth. Different mm -hmm. looks at similar concepts, but mm -hmm. not remakes. What a great name too, for a, for another exploration of the invisible man type trope, the hollow man. Yes. That's a brilliant name because it's, it, it visually describes what you're seeing, but metaphorically it describes when there's nothing of substance inside, you will be capable of something. That's evil yes. in your consequences. I, you are a hollow man. I, do, I love that name. I I do need to make a fashion comment. I love his sunglasses. <laughs> at, at this point, ones with <laughs> the little the side things. Yeah. Yeah. I actually have I, those. I actually have those. Those are cool. Are they for steampunk, Troy? Yes, exactly. Nice. They go with my steampunk character. Yes. Now, why would you wear pajamas to bed? Looks like being asleep, you'd want to be able to slip out and escape or something. I don't know. Just a weird choice there. Well, it's decorum. I don't know. <laughs> for the film, it could also what be... What decorum? It's, 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 it could also be for the visual. For yeah, the yeah. Well, yeah. I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. But then why did he unwrap his head? He didn't need to do that to go to bed. Yeah, well, yeah. Maybe comfort. Mm hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Stop Spiegel, you wear pajamas because it's cold. Well, that makes sense. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for very simply answering the issue we made far too complex. Mr. Mastic is here too. Says, which Batman foe would you cast Claude Rains as? Oh, good question. Ooh. I would choose Hugo Strange. Ooh. Excellent answer. Hugo yeah. Strange or maybe Monster yeah. Man. Yeah, Hugo Strange would be a one. Claude Rains as Hugo Strange. Oh, man. Done. Maybe Doctor, maybe Freeze. I was I thinking know. that myself, Mister Freeze. Yeah, maybe. I like that of them beating everything in sight because they don't know where he is. <laughs> the police officers just taking the sticks and smacking everything in the woods. Now the the. Uh, all they have to say, I think they're so primal about, there's something so primal about this. All they have to say is they're reports of an invisible man. And far before they get to his evil deeds, everybody automatically is terrified because there's something that, you know, there's a basic human thing of, oh, what would you do if you couldn't be, you know, or you didn't have to see yourself afterwards and so forth. That's a Dorian Gray trope right there, you know, well. <laughs> I uh I need to pull a professor geek. I'll be right back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm doing good so far. I don't know why. See, I went before the stream. <laughs> I did too. <laughs> yeah. I do like these little montages of the search oh. or of the keys and everything. What a great way to to ramp up the panic and show it with just something very simple, just these close-ups of a constant in the door and, locks and stuff. And just like he said, everyone, the panic, and he's asleep. Mm -hmm. Yep. And everyone's freaking out because of him, and he, he, there's an aspect that he really is and, and kind of enjoys about that. I think no conscience whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But this poor character, another great force of the pathos. Oh, camp uh, yeah. drawn in. It's uh it's it's Willie from the Dark Shadows, you know. Love that character. Willie and Barnabas, their dynamic oh, in Dark yeah. Shadows. You guys will? Yeah. Yeah, that room. I would love a study like that. Yeah. So that's what I mean about these old houses. It's like you had rooms like this that mm -hmm. you don't have in modern day houses. Yep.
I saw a man. He's got some major like, eyebrows going on too. Yeah, yeah. It said, uh, "Can we stop encouraging man caves and get back to the gentleman's study?" It's like, yes, <laughs> there you go, and all the cultural implications that survive are around that. Absolutely. And then that staircase. I love that staircase. Oh, yeah. yep. The shame sound engraver's not here. She'd love the staircase, right? <laughs> she loves those. Those curves and, and the grandeur of it, you know. And I'm trying to think. I I think I don't know if they're not a they're not a major trope in James Whale's film as they are in like Hitchcock or something. But you did have a very key that's, stairway in the dark old house, you know. That's John Carity. I come in and, and I see the, the, the gorgeous blonde and I hear something about the curves and the grandeur. <laughs> of the staircase. Oh, I missed that part. <laughs> not, not the lady of the staircase. <laughs> yes, I honey. Your wife curve. was talking about that, some that, other lady's curves. <laughs> I didn't even hear what you were saying. I only heard the professor. That uh, that was just such a great movement where we got back to Kemp and the camera just zoomed into him like a dolly there, our tracking. What a great way of because you didn't get a lot of that dynamic camera movement in this era of filmmaking. True, true. Um, it was very just sort of studio stages, sets, and and kind of get through and boom, boom, boom. But when you do have some dynamic movement like that, you can tell the director's really trying mm -hmm. to play around things. I got to agree. Curves, grandeur, absolutely. <laughs> Staircase is very nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, weirdos. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrifying. Did he hear him? Did he not? You know? Now explain yourself. Tom Spiegel says, what was he saying when the camera zoomed in on him? You guys were talking all over him. <laughs> Sorry. He, he was uh, calling the other scientists. Go ahead, Al. Uh, he, was also, well, he was also talking to a co uh, police officer, just like everybody else is calling in to the police. Yeah. Everybody, suddenly everybody's, quote, unquote, seeing an invisible man. Mm -hmm. But he's, uh, yeah, so he's, this is the, the great betrayal, or not betrayal, I mean, he's trying to survive, but in uh, his eyes, it'll be a betrayal. What gets me is, okay, he, the Invisible Man gets out of bed, takes the time to wrap up his face and everything before confronting his mm -hmm. friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> why? They're yeah. the only people in the house. Why did he feel he needed to wrap up his head? <laughs> well, again, I, I would draw the comparison to the, the World War I soldier who has a facial prosthetic. Mm -hmm. Even to the people that he's closest with, he wants to come across as normal as possible. Mm. True, that's a good point. Go to see Flora. Now this, of course, would be one he'd like to remain normal with. I but suppose... Yeah, it, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. I was no, going to make point, a crass joke. <laughs> at this point, he's totally off of the idea of trying to return. He, he's embracing the power that his, his great mind has given him at this point. If Gloria Stewart was in the Dark Old House, she was in some other great, even monster movies. I think I just can't remember which ones. Yeah, let me let me think. I, I'm, I'm trying to remember the other things that she's been in. So, <laughs> I mean, Burns a very says, prolific actress. Arcane Bird says the police just summoned Father Dowling and Jessica Fletcher. <laughs> 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 great references, both. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you just earned a special place in Netter's heart. <laughs> <laughs> now it's it's tragic. This 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 meeting starts off kind of touching, you know. wanted to do something tremendous 
for you. You can see how twisted that is, but on some level, you can see how it would make sense to his demented mind at this point. And I suppose if you're really objective, it's kind of a lie. He's it's justification on his part. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, and let's just said, imagine an invisible werewolf. That would be terrifying. Oh, my gosh. Oh, gosh. <laughs> An invisible werewolf vampire who's a mummy. <laughs> oh, gosh. Spidey Rules says everyone's gawking at the stairs, but get a load of those windows. Yeah. You know, I did think about, I considered for a, for a moment trying to fit another rewatch of monster squad after all of these. Cause it is such a love letter to these universal monsters, but yeah. uh, we just did it last year and stuff. So, well, like I said, we got <laughs> uh Avica, I'm doing Ava Costello. So we have a little bit of fun with it. Oh yeah. Here we go. This or his real craziness is or his real obsessive mm -hmm. arrogance is coming through. Your father couldn't help me. He's got the brain of a tapeworm, a maggot. You know, <laughs> I am the brilliant scientist. Only I can do it. Matt Nui said, nowadays, invisibility would be kind of useless thanks to thermal imaging. You're right. That is interesting that uh, some of these notions like to be invisible. I mean, with our technology today, anybody with an app on their smartphone would be able to see you, you know, <laughs> and some of these things have mm -hmm. kind of lost their uh, their their punch, you know. Um, but certainly the when the government was after you, they'd find you in a heartbeat. That's true. But the fact is that in 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 ordinary life used as as someone with this ability would use it it mm -hmm. would still it would still work yeah yeah you know again i'll point to hollow man for example mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah when they don't know you're coming yeah mm -hmm. although that would make for a great uh intro to a remake of the uh invisible agent oh yeah good call I did like too. Uh, was it who was it? Was it Daniel Heron talking about possibly doing a rewatch of Buffy the Vampire Slayer episodes? Yep. I did really yeah. like that episode yeah. with the, the the girl who becomes a girl there at uh, at the high school. You remember that one? She was living Played like in the all. attic or something at the school. Yeah, yeah. And at the end, they they recruited her for like a government yep. program or whatever. That, yeah, that would have made a great yeah. spinoff series. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was looking up Gloria Stewart. The only other universal horror film is uh, one of the lesser ones. It's called Secret of the Blue Room. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Play Red Rover or we're lost. <laughs> well, I love this idea. It's it's the same thing that you see in, in Star Trek The Next Generation when they're trying to deal with the, the cloaked Romulan Mm -hmm. uh, ships. Mm -hmm. They they set up mm -hmm. a you know a, a net of ships to catch when when the invisible ship tries to get through the blockade. Mm -hmm. This is that's terrifying. Yep. Oh, you're a man to trust. Not now, but it's coming. I will kill you. He gives him the tongue because he's that confident in his ability. <laughs> Something uh -huh. naughty boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This, and if it, I love the fact this is one of the funnier of the Universal Monster films. It has the most humor in it. Well, the, the, he's, he's he's emasculating them, right? He's take he's defanging yeah. them. You know, you are no yeah. threat to me. I will just mock you. you know? And we laugh, but it, it's that Freddy Krueger kind of humor. It's like we're laughing, mm. but there's danger here. It's, yeah, it's funny, but it's not funny. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Arcade Burns said, the thing about Monster Squad is that it wasn't a universal movie. Got up 
upset that the monster close and yet the movie was mainly filmed. Yeah, no, it was just a love letter to the Universal Monster movies. Though, yeah. So I mean, yeah, it's not yeah, technically. And I'll tell uh, you, when it comes to the IP on some of these things, I could do, I could probably do a whole video just on that, especially in yeah. relation to the Mego uh, release of action figures when they can and cannot get a license. That's <laughs> 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 name. You just see the pants. A little scab, I like the little jump at the head. That is crazy. Oh, man. I'm, I'm psychopathic, but that. I'm funny, too. Exactly. Like I said, it's very Joker. Yeah, yeah kind yeah. of. That's, that's, that's the kind of stuff I think he got from it. Yeah, I could see... Mark Hamill's Joker pulling that stunt, singing yeah. that little song or something after that. Yeah, that, absolutely. Yeah, Ballad and Demo makes a great point. Freddie kills as he jokes. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. and and I always felt that that was very, I don't want to say off putting, but kind of. You're laughing at the same time you're afraid, you know, and that mm -hmm. is a weird dichotomy. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Uh, the Invisible Man, the original internet troll. <laughs> <laughs> Behold the power of pants. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, Kemp is just absolutely terrified. As he should be. Yeah. And total paranoia. The Spidey Rules makes a great point. Like, it's funny no... for us, but it's not funny for the people in the film. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. It's terrifying. I mean, imagine if you were Kemp. There's what defense do they really have? Well, you got to get really, clever. Like, you're out there beating things with sticks. What are you going to do when you find me? I'm just going to kill you. So I love that. Aren't you pleased you found me? Here I am. What are you going to do? You know, it, that's, yeah. What are they thinking? Well, one of the things that I'm surprised that they, well, and correct me if I'm wrong, I can't remember it. In one of the sequels, <laughs> it would have been great if there was a blind character. A blind character would not see, no oh. pun intended, the the True. invisible man as being any different from anyone else. Yep, yep, yep. True. Or at least get a uh, get some paint and a squirt gun or something. I mean, you could right? tag him pretty easily, you know, <laughs> on one hand. Throw well, down like, some flower, you know. So he's yeah. like the um, the Frankenstein movie where he uh, goes to the blind man's house. The blind exactly. man can't see him, so yeah. he's not Wonderful. repelled by him. And yeah, that's in the original yeah. novel, and that is so heart wrenching, you know. Mm -hmm. When you realize that there's there's at least somebody that can look yeah. past the ugliness and just see who he is. It's even more yeah. heart wrenching in the novel too because. There's a whole family involved that the monster's being sort of a benevolent <laughs> yeah. spirit to, yeah. But this is a this is a very joker like move too when he takes the money outside. Here you go, money, money, free money. Exposing yeah. that, okay, what if there are no consequences for you? What if the money from the bank is just laid on the sidewalk? Dwight, would you Dwight return Fry, it or would you right dive there. in for it? Right. You know, There's so that's Dwight. um yeah, I know it's Dwight Fry, but I'm still talking. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm looking at going, going, okay. So quickly, if you guys keep going on other topics, I have to bring up what I can. You got this floating um, uh, drawer just there. Why do people go onto the ground? I would just simply take in the drawer and go, okay, thanks, and walked off. <laughs> well, yeah, you're right. But I think that's the point he's trying to make is is the, the anybody's just like, you know, um, remove those consequences or whatever. But yeah, you're right. If you want the money, take the money. No, I get a little bit of a. Yeah, I get in a little, fairness, a little bit of a Frankenstein vibe person. here when the creature oh. comes into his bride mm -hmm. in the bedroom. You know, when the creature comes into what's her name, his fiance's bedroom. I get a little bit of that vibe here with her, the blonde in the gorgeous bedroom. You know, and sorry, Troy, what were you saying? No, no, I was just gonna say, how do you know that one of these people isn't doing the best that he can to collect all that money to return it to the bank? We oh, never sure. see that. True, true, true. Let's 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 be fair, you know, let's not <laughs> judge too quickly. Oh, clever. Yeah, they drag the room to really make sure. I like this though. This is intelligent thinking, you know. We we have this this fantastical situation, but 
how do we deal with it logically? Mm -hmm. Removing anything. And yeah, you're right. They've got a chance, as he says, because that in his hubris, he told Kemp the exact time he would be there. So he's setting a trap for himself, and we'll see if he can pull it off or not. But. Right, exactly. It does. When he, Go ahead. Uh, when he wrecks the train, that uh, brings his kill count up. The Invisible Man is one of the most prolific killers of oh, all yeah. the uh, Universal Monsters. I, the estimated idea. kill count is 122. Oh, wow. Wow. Um, oh. Go ahead. I forgot my point. No, it's not important. Go well, on. we were talking about some of the other incarnations of the invisible enemy, and uh, Spidey Rules brings up the great Smallville episode, you know, spilling the paint on the on the invisible crypto freak, kryptonite freak, right. you know? Yes, yes, excellent. Mm -hmm. You know, if you don't mind, I'm going to go ahead and drop the, the link to that, um, to my uh, fixing the, the DC universe. Oh, please do. Yeah. Yeah. Page because it, it, it ties directly to those kinds of things. There's some great things that came out of Smallville that I, I would love to um, preserve in my, in my imagined. Well, yeah. Let me, I can't think and I can't speak yeah, and, going talk close. And, and type at the same time. Yeah. Paladin Demo says, yeah, it's hubris to reveal your secret. Exactly. Because he, He's untouchable. He figures his ability is so grand that there's no, there's no human ingenuity that can see that can seek him out. But uh, yeah, that's the absolute arrogance and hubris. But that fixing the DC universe is is my uh, you know imagined. If if we could go back in time and 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 reweave the DC cinematic universe starting in like you know. The, the Smallville era, mm -hmm. you know, when they should have started it before Marvel got started. Yeah. And and, and I do recommend that group to anybody who thinks that's interesting because Troy's ideas on there. So I love this, just kind of watching them. They think they're yeah. so clever. I like the Roman phalanx. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is I, like I, a I, Roman phalanx. Excellent, excellent analogy. And they're all moving as a unit, exactly for that same reason. Mm -hmm. And there they are, the spray bottles. Mm -hmm. Yep. Decoy. And this is the ultimate uh, test. I mean, uh, the Invisible Man here, I forget, I forget the character's name, Griffin. Griffin, Dr. Perfect. Griffin. Yeah. yeah, he's... um. This would be the exact sort of challenge he would want because he sees himself as so much more intelligent. You know, yes, bring it on, bring all of your machinations on. I will, I will conquer them. Nonetheless, way to play the role there, Kemp. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look terrified or anything. <laughs> Oh, unless you said it's back. Are you talking about my my werewolf avatar? I've I've been tempted so many times to uh to bring that back, but I thought nope. Let's uh wait until Halloween season. <laughs> Poor kitty. Poor kitty. Aww. Oh, it's so bad. Poor kitty. Instant instant black cat. I know. Aww. Poor kitty. <laughs> I see a cat and I want to paint it black. <laughs> Okay, points for the classic Rolling Stones reference. Oh, that's tough. I came with you. I've been here the whole time to keep my promise. <laughs> I had a cold and uncomfortable journey just to keep my promise. <laughs> I kept that's terrifying. my promise. Don't keep your distance. <laughs> Rode by it on the running board of the car. Wow. I mean, real dedication there. That's and terrifying, too. You more. see the scarf. Yeah. He's strangling him. Yeah. And 
and you have you know what is what is he planning you know <laughs> i hope your car's insured <laughs> very joker very joker so this is clearly not set in the time period of the novel <laughs> yeah exactly exactly I like as he narrates to him exactly what will happen when you're going over, just to increase the terror. Actually, if I'm going to share anything here, what I should be sharing is the fixing the universal cinematic universe. Uh, do you have another group for that? I do. Oh, cool. Because... Yeah, and, um I, I really always felt that if they were going to do remakes of these universal monsters, mm -hmm. they needed to kind of be more um, faithful to the, to the original source material. So do uh, an invisible man, but set it in the 1890s, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. Yeah. This is, uh, this is fascinating. Yeah, Al, do you remember, um, was it? It was it in Sanctuary. Uh, yeah, the, they, they did, the, the Invisible Man was one of the co uh, one of the uh, conspirators from the original ones, but then his daughter or whatever, or his, uh, his great daughter, granddaughter, or something like that, ended up being the uh, one. There was that, but then there was also um, in League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Right. Now I can't yeah. remember the graphic novel. I know it was vastly different than the movie, but I still mm -hmm. like elements of the movie. I thought the movie got a bad rap. Uh, but that Invisible Man too, and everybody suspected him automatically because you've got no consequences. What are you going to try? You know, um, it's just interesting to see different explorations of the trope. If there's a character that can be swung however you want to, it's the Invisible Man because he's mm -hmm. kind of Joker esque. Yeah. You know, at any given moment, he can be. He can decide to be the good guy or he could decide to be the villain. It yeah. Doesn't matter. There's an absolute necessary trickster element to the, to the character. Yeah. You can't do without that. Uh, you're right, Matchstick. Yeah. Shapeshifters like the comedian Clayface, they play off that kind of archetype too. Um, able to blend in, able to, to not look like their consequences and such. <laughs> There's breathing in my bar. <laughs> <laughs> and they're you know they're they're super egg on their face now they're great all of their schemes tech Kemp and they could not do it so they can't protect anybody then if they had the entire force and the entire all of their resources behind protecting this one man's life at the given moment they knew it was going to be killed and they couldn't do it I mean, this is really, you know, dire for them now. They've got to bring all of their intelligence to bear. So, like, I like that scene a little while ago when they were around the table, uh, you know, okay, round table. Oh, he's got to eat. He must sleep, different things like that. And yet, when do they find him? Total chance. Total chance fluke. Somebody in the barn happens to mm -hmm. to hear him snoring. And a, like, and a snow. But I was just going to say, help. snow is not the friend of the invisible man. True, so. true. Now, I don't. I don't care how much hay he's got in there. That can't be a comfortable, warm sleep. No, because it, you know, it's getting <laughs> into places you don't want hay. Yep. <laughs> now he said the the reward was a thousand pounds. Back then, that was a lot of a money. A lot of money. Yeah. Wow. I mean, wow. that would pretty much set him up for a really long time. He gets a new barn. in the fire so so again you see these tropes you know just like from frankenstein you can see the similar aspects and that's because you're dealing with the same director i mean yes these elements are in the stories but uh you know when i was talking about theme know your themes you know there is this idea of the the monstrosity within yourself or that which you like to hide from the public when you lose it and decide to flaunt it it will end in that blaze of glory it might be a blaze but it's going to end in that blaze of glory because society won't allow any other way and that's a, a theme in a lot of Wales's films 
And there you go, the footprints. Yep. Bam. Such a great, oh. great effect there. Yeah. Boom, down. Mm -hmm. The bullets don't need to see you. Yeah. Good point. Oh, I'm, uh... 100 pounds in 1933 is 7,204 pounds in 2020. I don't know. That sounds like a lot of money to me. Times 10, so that's... Uh, yeah. 70. Yeah, 70,000. Yeah, so like I said, lots of money. So now you bring in the, uh, the daughter again. Invisible as life goes, and that's terrifying. As you die, that uh, the dead flesh becoming visible once again. Mm -hmm. And it's very, it's very picture of Dorian Gray esque too. The idea that, uh, well, you know, it's biblical. Be sure your sins will find you out. You know that uh, that we're concept. real close to the end. Wolf Ten Media. We're at uh, an hour. What is yeah. it? We just got a minute and a half left, basically. Yeah, really, only a minute and a half left. And you do have him at least realizing what he did wrong. I, I doubt he's repented necessarily, but he realizes, you know. And what I mean by that, he's saying, I meddled in things that man must leave alone. Yet, that's because the consequences are upon him. If he wasn't, if he, if he was powerful again, would he would he uh still be thinking this way? And I love the way he comes back into vision where you see the skull first. You see the inside yeah. of him, yeah. that mortality, the 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 vulnerability before the bones out to the flesh. Because too that he's just like anybody else that could have been you know, there but for the grace of God go I, you know, that kind of idea yeah. where it comes to exactly. that, that monster within. And one of my favorite stories that I've brought it up before that he took his daughter to go see this film in Pennsylvania in a re in a re-release and he was telling his daughter about it and everybody started to listen to him because they recognized his voice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and, he was, and he was basically ever telling everyone uh, facts about the film and what, what he did when he was doing the film. Like his own rewatch commentary. Yeah. Yeah. Can, you, cool. can you imagine being Claude Rains in a dark theater? It's basically like being the Invisible Man again, right? Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. you can't see him. Yeah. Could you imagine, though, if you were Claude Rains when this film came out and everybody's on edge about it, just like sneaking into the men's room? Hello. <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> <that voice. laughs> Can we go to every? That's in me. That's in me. That's in me. I did Vincent Price love to do that kind of practical jokes quite a bit, even on his children. <laughs> so. I see you, Barbara. Yeah. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> and, oh, and, and another thing about, I think it was the same the same incident. He went. He went to go into the theater. The guy selling the tickets recognized him and said, no, "You can go in, you know, for nothing." And he's like, he got angry. He said, "No, I will pay." the full price uh -huh. <laughs> it's uh my dvd it's the set that i showed everybody after the movie it goes to the bonus material menu and it's really creepy because it's just a static image but the sound effects has him laughing very distantly in the back of the headphone so i'm sitting here watching a static image and suddenly i hear that laughter out of my left ear like slowly <laughs> behind me I'm like whoa what is that yeah <laughs> yeah right <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you know, it goes to show you these movies. They're, they, yeah, they're dated when it comes to effects and all of that, but they're, they, they, they last because it's archetypal stories that that terrify us, you know. So it's um, it's good stuff and, and great. I mean, just great performances. Mm -hmm. Like I said, yeah. Claude Rains is one, that's one of the great performances because it's all vocal. True. I mean, it is there's some physical stuff, but you don't see his face until that last moment. And just to remind people who maybe don't recognize the names and stuff we're throwing around, if you've been hanging out with us for these Tuesday Night Classics rewatch, this is the Claude Rains from Notorious. 
the uh, yeah. the short little guy that we were feeling such pathos for, even in his you know evil, yep. you know, from Hitchcock's there. So, hey, uh, I I don't think I'm going to last through all of the closeouts and everything. So I'm going to run to the restroom right now myself while you guys just vamp a bit on what the what you liked about the movie, and I'll be right back. Well. I was going to say, um, ensuing silence. I do. No, no. I do. I, well, you got to give us a chance to think, Professor. Um, I, I do have to say uh, the the morality play of uh, what would you do if, you know, there were no consequences. Um, I, I, I got to admit, as a man, I, I would be in serious trouble if I had this ability. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This I mean, be, uh... this would be a real serious temptation for me. I think every male individual in the stream is probably thinking exactly the same thing. Yeah, and it's a it's a ter it's a terrifying thought to think that you, how far would you go in certain aspects? Yeah, of of. Like you know, like what are you capable of if there are zero consequences? Kind of, kind of makes you glad that it's not a possibility, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's don't, it's terrifying. don't give me that kind of temptation. Yeah, I mean, we are all we're all very. I mean, it's good. It's nice to think that yes, we'd all be very strong of of heart and spirit, and not you know succumb to such temptation oh man and i would have to say that's that is part of the the question of what is the intent of the you know hg wells or even the director here what is the intent uh what what, what causes his insanity is it really the chemicals is it the process of being in, invisible and dealing with that or is it the temptation and it could be well. It it's could also be all of the. Above, it's probably but. like I said. It's probably a combination of everything. The the drugs could have taken away a certain um, rationale, uh, taken away the inhibition, uh, and like I said, and then not only that, but then you do have the realization: no one could see me do this. There's yeah. no consequence. I mean, there is a consequence because. If you're the only one and people know you're invisible, they're going to know it's you. So it's one thing to do it, but people will know it's you. That but... brings up very interesting legal aspects, though. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, really? You didn't Prove it see was me. me do it. Prove it was me, you know? Yeah, we were, um, we've been talking a lot because it's my channel, you know? So obviously, you know, superheroes came up with all the great stories that do have that. Did any of you guys remember that very short lived sci fi series, The Invisible Man? Where he uh, his body excreted quicksilver or something like that that would make him invisible, and he used the ability to be a hero, though to you know he was hunted down, I think, by government officials or whatever. But he was out there trying to help people. Um, so you do have you know positive portrayals of that kind of thing too. You what you saw it out right? Uh, I never really watched it, but I, uh, but I have I remember vague it. memories of it. Yeah, it was <laughs> um, it was on yeah, it was on Sci Fi uh, for. Two seasons, forty six episodes, uh, two thousand to two thousand two. Yeah, mm -hmm. but no, I mean, and that's well, I mean, even look at the uh, the Invisible Agent. I mean, they're not all necessarily villains, right? I mean, mm -hmm. they're 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 there's a great deal of versatility to the Invisible character, um, from from villain to hero. I mean, it. It just depends. Um, but again, this kind of gets on what we were talking, what you were talking about in the pre-show, uh, the role of the hero, mm -hmm. you know, and, yeah. and, and that, and that's a question of character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They had uh, a lot of those old sci-fi series ended up being really good. And uh, they just, you know, never got enough time to develop. I have this guy's autograph too. Uh, there oh, was yeah. a raffle at one of the cons where some people were trying to save the show or whatever. And uh, yeah, it was a good show. It was one of the good ones. I don't know why it uh, came canceled, but yeah, anyway. Kevin. Kevin was a research. Uh, uh, well, Dar Darian ended up in jail because he was a career criminal and cat burglar. Kevin, but his brother Kevin was a research scientist working on a top secret project. Cut a deal with the bosses to get Darian out of prison in exchange for using him as a test subject. You know, good. Spidey play, rules. Uh, yeah, played him with the Quicksilver gland. That's what it was. Uh, Spidey Rules brings up 
uh, uh, an allusion to the uh, the Invisible Girl in in Fantastic Four, uh, a character mm. that Nanette has has cosplayed, and um, go gosh, that. Just bringing that up in this context makes me realize an invisible woman and an invisible man, uh, you have two very different expectations there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, explain. I think that was that was No, I think that goes without explain. explanation. I think you have higher expectations of the woman than you do of the man. At oh, least yeah. I oh, that reminds me. I've always I've always been of the opinion that the male is much more uh driven by his desires than the female. Well, it's a it's a and you know, you can disagree with me if they want, but it's a it's kind of a historical fact. If you look at any culture, as soon as as soon as any society stops protecting its women. Yeah. And I don't mean the sense that, I mean, of course, you can look at historical societies and women were, were very mistreated and, and didn't have equal rights in different places. Of course, that's a fact, too. I'm not denying that. But um, but anytime they they sort of ignore or, or, or try to deconstruct the role of the female or the feminine in society, it is such a moralizing center. It is mm -hmm. such a... Uh, a sort of a hallowed thing to be protected in a culture in general. As soon as any society stops doing that, they crumble apart, they fall apart. And we're seeing that in our society with the, the deconstruction of the very idea of a mother. I mean, how dare you suggest a woman's, you know, mothering should be a, a, a strictly mothering thing or a woman thing. Well, because it just is, that's nature, you know? This um, is why I have such a problem with the way that, that the, that female heroes are portrayed in the current, you know, superhero genre. They're mm -hmm. using it as an SJW cudgel when you have characters like Sue Richards that you really could do some very good messaging with mm -hmm. that wouldn't offend anybody and get your point across very, very well. But you're absolutely right. They devalue the mother. They mm -hmm. devalue the wife. Exactly. I, I don't know. I don't yeah. Know. Yeah. You're uh you're you're internalizing misogyny if you go that route. You know, <laughs> it's ridiculous. All the, the, the logical stuff there. So uh great way to turn a potential ally against you mm -hmm. uh, and defeat your own your own uh, purported purpose, but yeah, yeah, whatever SJWs. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I mean, yeah, I mean there is room for the vindictive female, as Tom Spiegel points out. There's a Uniquely fed danger as well, but it's just not necessarily the exact same. But they're supposed to be the villain, not the hero. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Ca Captain Manhater. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, if you guys have any other closing thoughts on the movie, feel free to, to, to give them. Otherwise, we can start um, wrapping up with the, the call outs and everything. Anything else about the film or? Just, just amazing how old film like that could be so short. Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. But like so an hour, hour and eleven minutes, something like that. Yeah. But look and, how full it was packed. Uh -huh. You know. Yeah. yeah. It may exactly. have been a short movie, but it was so packed with so much action and intrigue that you don't notice that's a short film. Mm -hmm. Not to mention, there weren't very many times when we were silent. We we had a lot to say about this oh, yeah. movie. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So and, one uh, thing I do want to promote is for crying out loud, people join the Facebook group. I mean, I, there, I know that there's some people that are stalwart professor geek supporters that for whatever reason, have a problem with Facebook for crying out loud. There's is. a lot of great conversations going on there that aren't happening yes. anywhere else. Facebook is not evil. It is a yeah. tool. Use it correctly and you'll have no issue please somebody ask sound engraver she'll tell you she she <laughs> was she was a staunch holdout yep. and uh and she at least sees the value of being there for the professor geek group if for no other reason and you know it's true sometimes i see people writing great comments in the chat but uh because of the the flow of the conversation or we're past that point or whatever i just it would just break things up if i halt everything and go back and and cover this or that but the group is a place where you can just post that kind of kind of thing and somebody there to to throw their ideas at it or something like that so that yeah, is consider a, a good... this if, if if you placed a comment in the chat here 
that you felt was 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 worthy of conversation, but we missed it. Go ahead and drop it in the Facebook group and say, "Hey, I was watching the 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 Invisible Man stream, and it, it got me thinking." Blah, yeah. and start a conversation. Mm-hmm. That's what that group is for. Yeah, like Matchstick, they're talking about the Monster Men or the Mad Monk to be make a great different kind of Batman movie for social material. Absolutely, yeah, we could talk about that there all all we want. Um, I also do want to drop a link myself because it's kind of weird that I'd never thought to do this yet. Since uh, this is the uh, Universal Monster season, this is the uh, the Facebook page, the iconic Facebook page that Al has uh, taken over and run for us, which is the iconic monsters page. And he's every day, I think, two or three times a day, I think, posting uh, images yeah. or trivia or anything from this classic era of Universal Monsters. Is he does a good job with that? So I put the link three, there three three times a day. Now it was it was four for a long time. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're yeah. slacking, is what you're saying. <laughs> Try. Well, I started. I started um, running out of materials, so I. Oh had yeah, to, that's like, you know, that's that's back. that's fair, especially when you you're doing over and over. Well, again. I try. Well, I, I try to do a piece of art, uh, a some, uh, and at the end of the day, it's either like a magazine cover or a poster, lobby card. So, something like that or like an art poster and in the middle sometimes it's either like a, a movie scene or it could be a collectible or anything like that and let me just say tom spiegel welcome to the facebook group thank you <laughs> i do yes. not go blah 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 we do not go blah blah blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you're absolutely right <laughs> I like that she just patiently held that until she could get it out. That was a great, like, this is going to be good. I'm going to wait on this. <laughs> no, no, no. That's that's the way it should be. So <laughs> as long as we're doing that, I'm going to drop the, the link that I dropped earlier, the fixing the Universal Monsters shared cool. universe. So, you know, Universal has been trying very, very badly to mm-hmm. create this this dark universe and 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 just doing a terrible job of it. Blumhouse uh, will do a great job. Yeah, you know, but <laughs> I well, I started this Facebook group so that we could all get together and just imagine how we would do it and do it right. Mm-hmm. If if yeah. they would just and and rights are not even an issue. There are some things that are universal specific that they have the rights to mm-hmm. and. And and certainly they can draw on that, but a lot of that stuff is public domain. They don't have to ask anyone's permission to yeah. go back to the original source material either. And the problem with the with the uh, dark universe is they announced they were going to make this great all inclusive universe, multi movies, and the first one they did was the Mummy, and it was terrible. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, killed it on arrival. You better, you better get it. You better do a good job up front look at right. what did marvel you know use as their yeah. cornerstone they use the incredible hulk and they used iron man both mm-hmm. excellent films well okay i incredible hulk wasn't excellent but good yeah you know yeah. iron man was excellent and they built off of it mm-hmm. you know yeah. you gotta start with a good one if you yeah. don't start off good out of the gate and and but it was even before mummy they even tried with dracula untold great idea oh yeah that's right terribly yeah. executed i yeah. wanted i wanted to love that movie i went opening night to that movie mm-hmm. and i was like this is not gonna do well yeah yeah <laughs> you know yep he really wanted to like it he's like i hope this movie's good i hope this movie's good no <laughs> <laughs> yeah is that the one with um oh, what's that actor's name the guy played bard in the Hobbit, Luke uh, Luke Evans. Yep, Luke Evans. Luke Evans yeah, yeah. Okay. I was going to say from the Alienist, but yes, he's a great. Oh, the, yeah, the Alienist too. Yeah, he, uh, he, he. I I thought he did a fine job, um, but the the story was not everything they set out to do. It could have been great, uh, and again, even the ending, they did the same thing. They they overdid with 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 uh, the mummy. They they focused more on the hey here's the hook for the for the the extended universe, mm-hmm. and they should have focused more on the story itself. They should have they should have started build they should have started building a, this uh, with Brendan Fraser's mummy movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Good too. Yeah. Right. 
Mm-hmm. I think all of that has a place in in a blended universal um, you know world. So you know, come 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 see the work that we've done so far in the Facebook group. Yeah, keep it keep it in the past because quite, uh, quite frankly, I think a gothic feel is part of what really sells a lot of these films. They that jump older, they jump forward way too fast. With yeah, this when you, when you have a, a the a, the modern day just doesn't really work for the classic monsters. I don't think if you're gonna do it, mm-hmm. work your way up to it. Take your time. Go slow. You know, it's, it's like, well, excuse the analogy. It's like making love. Don't jump to the end. Take your time. Build up. <laughs> so, uh, Paladin Demo is asking what the next uh, movie is. And yeah, next week we continue with our James Whale and we go to Frankenstein, the first movie. That is uh, next Tuesday. Uh, so, so yeah, nothing but Universal Monster movies between now and Halloween uh, on the Tuesday Night Classics. So it's going to be a glorious time there. And we can continue this conversation definitely about, you know, how to, what's a good remake of that or whatever. Yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, they had cast Johnny Depp was supposed to be the new Invisible Man when they were still had all these grand plans that they just he would have been a great because it listened to his voice you know and his um i think that would have been interesting but mm-hmm. um so johnny the, depp uh, is a good actor i mean he yeah does he is he's a great he actor some like crummy him. roles but he really has an incredibly versatile range absolutely that absolutely. i don't think they've capitalized on in Hollywood. yeah 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 he's uh he's almost as good as jim varney <laughs> oh yeah that jim varney is a was a great great actor he had he really, such a wide range he actually did that's the thing i mean he was only every old pigeonholed as earnest but if even in his earnest movies he always does these different characters i'm sorry get me started get me started <laughs> <laughs> you notice that i all i gotta do is a little poke and boom he's off <laughs> i did i did post a video like right before the stream uh, a little clip of him doing uh boogie billy or something like that one of his earnest quote unquote uh family members and it's like this disco dancer and he's like yeah. this suave it's it's so hilarious and weird to look at but anyway that's in the group too but uh but yeah frankenstein next week so to to go through this is tuesday nothing going on tomorrow uh thursday in the morning family will do another second cup cafe thursday evening we're gonna do our dune book study which i need to finish up myself i'm a little behind not behind but i need to go ahead and prepare that uh that portion i have to i have to read it for the 13th time (laughs) exactly yeah and underline and take notes and make sure i know what i'm going to talk about you know that kind of thing but uh but yeah that's thursday night friday night uh is fan man's going to start his friday night frights now i'm not going to be there for for uh fright night that's just not i mean it's a good movie and everything but um i don't know if you guys know this or not but see friday is my birthday yeah, I, I don't mention it much, so I don't know if you guys knew that. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. um, really? <laughs> well, I've already <laughs> thankfully, thankfully, I've already taken care of that. So. Yes, Al. Uh, yeah, good. Good, that, stuff, good stuff. Was it nice? Was it good? Is it good? It's an amazing just... book. Yeah. Well, Al, like oh. last Christmas or whatever, it got me the art of uh, Masters of the Universe, and this time he got me the the uh, newspaper compiled compiled newspaper comics, which are wonderful. So um yeah, pretty cool. But anyway, that's uh that's Friday. I'll I'll do I might do something. Um, you know, not to conflict with anybody else, but I might just do like a what's up stream or something. I don't know, it depends on my day. I'm just gonna let let's see how it goes. But Saturday, of course, is uh back to the Saturday night rewatches, and that is over on Netter's channel. Is that right this week? Or uh, uh no, fun. still on Troy's. Yeah, still, it's still on mine. She's she's although she's gotten her computer fixed, she's still having some problems there. So Okay. So I uh, I might actually have to just buy a new computer. I mean yeah. it's yeah, it's it's sort of working, but not quite. So it's like, yeah. Yeah. But uh, Saturday, uh, we're, we're oh, go ahead. Al. No, no go, ahead, go ahead. You were still talking about Saturday. Saturday is the uh, is the uh, uh, rewatch, and and I I hope it's a rewatch for for you guys. If you have a chance, watch it before then. Uh, a very hard science fiction film, uh, Primer. It's the penultimate episode of my uh, time travel okay. series. Uh, this is some serious time travel. Um, I would say if there's one film that really gets sci-fi time travel, right. It's, it's primer. It, uh, it's, it plays with it, but it's very thoughtful and stands up to multiple rewatchings. 
I'm kind of shocked that uh, time after time hasn't made its way into your uh, time. Well, I, I may Ooh. actually end up doing a video of movies that I didn't actually do that. I do highly recommend. And that's okay. one of them. I don't think I did uh, the time machine either. Uh, HG Wells. That's true. Yeah. Which is uh, one of my favorite movies. So maybe we still will do that one. Maybe on, on Netter's channel. Once we get her. A new talk computer. about the, the George Powell version, correct? Uh, the, the original one. one. Robert Taylor. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Awesome. Is that the new? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a lot of them that are, that are good that I, that I didn't get to. It's just, I, I didn't want to, you know, I ran out of time <laughs> <laughs> and, um, let's not forget that, uh, on Friday night, uh, fan man's Friday night frights will begin with the original fright night. Yeah. I said that. Oh, yeah. you did. I yeah, dropped my radio. <laughs> yeah. Al, you just weren't paying attention. Uh, I mean, the prop even said what? that he wouldn't be there because you know it's his birthday, actually, so he's gonna be doing something birthday. else. Actually, <laughs> you know? what, no, actually, what it was is I, I was having a little fritzing when you were talking about that, so I that's probably why I missed it. Gotcha, gotcha. My yeah. computer was my yeah, my leg was going. <laughs> oh, go ahead. So that's so what were you gonna say, Troy? Well, I was gonna say, unless we forget. The alternate Saturday night watch yes, is, is Wolf 10 Media's uh, Weeb Watch on Saturday nights. Yes. Uh, so I just dropped the link for that, too. Sorry, I don't. I, I haven't had a chance to get caught up on what's going on with the Weeb Watches. I just yeah. know there is one. So I'm going to mm -hmm. drop the link. Yeah. And, uh, and and speaking of Weeb Watches, that comes to, to Sunday. Sunday with Mr. Matchsticks channel. Yeah. Yeah. Now you guys are still keeping uh, study hall every other week. Or are you going to move to every week? Or well, that's I'm glad you brought that up because we are planning to go every week because cool. Mr. Matchstick cool. decided he wanted to go every week with the Weeb Watch. Yeah. Uh, what we're going to do is he's going to take a, a slightly later slot on sun on Sunday nights, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Aged Boomer and I and I may as well drop his channel too. Aged mm -hmm. Boomer and I are going to go an hour earlier on Sundays with a weekly. Um, study hall that'll be starting uh, either next week or the week after. I, I don't remember exactly, Very but, cool. Very but cool. you know, check out the Facebook group, uh, the professor Greek Facebook group. That's where we'll definitely be posting that updated schedule as mm -hmm. it comes out. So definitely. Yeah. That's um, Sunday nights. And then of course, Monday night, we'll be back to sound engraver and her Monday night muse. She did a really cool, uh, talk on contrast it was a little different she was bringing a lot of visual art last monday it was mm -hmm. nice so um yeah she'll have something else monday mm -hmm. night planned of course and she's uh, just really a, an all-around artist isn't she it's not just about awesome. the music yeah 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 uh it, 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 she, it's grounded in music in some way you know so she kind of yeah. stays true to her to her uh channel's theme but she really is able to branch it out and um because yeah some of the I mean, some of the music stuff I don't, uh, you know, can't follow everything because I'm not a music, you know, major or something like that. But but it's always connected to something that uh, is relevant. So it's good. Agent Boomer confirmed that starting September 13th, we're going weekly. So yeah. I will mm -hmm. then be updating the calendar based on that. Mm -hmm. Very cool. And then, of course, Tuesday back here for Frankenstein. So that's uh, got the whole week planned there. Uh, I was going to say something else. Um, it was about schedules or or something. I don't remember. It's gone now. Something It'll that come. you a week that you can't make it, a week that you need to No. Okay. Not really. Um planning a video in between that isn't on the schedule? No. No, nothing even like that. I don't know. Try, I'll come to me as soon as I help. Like, try now. I yeah, I appreciate it. That would be very useful if there was any of those things, but uh, it'll, come <laughs> to me the, it'll come to me the moment I stop the stream. <laughs> so right. I'll uh, announce it elsewhere if I have to. Which means but... you will post it in the Professor Geek Facebook group. Which exactly. Be on. Exactly. Exactly. But I will encourage people to go like Age of Boomers. Uh, oh, now I remember. Age of Boomer reminded me. Uh, I am. Age of Boomer says to check your P.O. box on your birthday. First of all, thank you so much. I'm just kind of being cheap about the, those who do send me stuff. Very much appreciated. No one has to do that. Uh, very much appreciated. Uh, I am going to be switching post PO boxes. Uh, so um, anything anybody sends me at the old one, it'll still, still get to me. It's, it's forwarded. But uh, but I am going to have a new PO box at a different uh, location that's a little bit more convenient for me right now with, with work and everything like that. So I'll post that. I'll change that 
post eventually, but everything sent to the old one will still make it to me. It's forwarded. So uh, that's fine. I appreciate that. But I just wanted to give people a heads up about that when I get the new one. Of course, one anything that comes from me will just show up on your doorstep without a postmark. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> At the perfume note. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, letters cut out from magazine articles. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, and it, so uh, and anything it, else guys what I, else I, I think we've rung it out no. No. okay cool well thank you guys for hanging out with us tonight it's fun as always great uh, great time in the pre-show and wonderful time in this rewatch we'll be back doing it again absolutely with Frankenstein so that'll be fun and with all these other rewatches coming up this month so good stuff and uh, yeah till next time keep and don't forget to like Sorry, don't forget to no, like, share, ahead. and subscribe all of the channels because it does help our algorithms. Yes, you guys are I awesome. posted all those links for a reason. Make sure you do all the things. <laughs> exactly. Now, that is a big help, but not everybody can super chat, understandably so. I very much appreciate those who do, but uh, but that's just such a great way that anybody can help is uh, you know making sure you're subscribed or, or uh, clicking the thumbs up and everybody. And, and, and you know, from, from, from before the show, you made an excellent point. If you can just comment on the videos, that mm -hmm. interaction is is helpful to the channel. Yeah, yeah, just, absolutely. Just get involved in the conversations because uh, you you may not be able to do a super chat or or support on Patreon or whatever it is, but you know, interaction helps the professor too. Let him know that yeah. you enjoy the content so he keeps doing it. Yep, yep. So very much appreciated. But uh, yeah, that's your sign off. That's it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time, keep enjoying and digging deeper into the stories you love. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.